<laughs> hey y'all, this is your girl, Mrs. Troy Banks, the world's most satisfied wife. That's right, I'm satisfied, and I want to welcome you to Solution Sundays at 7. That's right, and we are about to get started with the beautiful, the amazing First Lady Angela Cadwell, y'all. Listen, this is hot. This is about to be hot like butter. This woman got a <laughs> lot inside of her, and we want to share it with you today. So come on, grab your girls, grab your friends, and let's get started with the show. Solution Sunday at 7. See you soon. Welcome everybody to Solution Sundays at 7. That's right. I'm so excited today because I have an amazing and beautiful guest sitting with me and I want to introduce you to her today. And this is the beautiful First Lady Angela Catway. Hey, oh my goodness. Hey, I'm so glad you're with me today. I'm so glad to be here. I it's must so say, you wearing that better white belt like shirt now. She wears, she ain't she sport the job. I wear this shirt. Uh, <laughs> that's right, because she's a wife and she's a better wife with a better life. Yes, and we're going to be talking about that today. And so you are the first lady of Transformational Christian Church in Highland Park. Yeah, Transformation Christian Church in Highland Park. And you, you have an amazing husband out here. Tell I us a little do. bit about this amazing husband of so yours. My awesome husband is Harold Cadwell. We will be married in a We'll be married 11 years in November. 11 years. Uh, we have seven, count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven children. Seven wow. Seven children. I thought I was doing something with my oh, four and you got no, seven. Let no, me sit no, my tail down. down over to basketball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you got more than the Brady Bunch. We have a team. We have a team. So, um, and he is just an awesome man of God. Been pastoring now for 18 years. Wow. And um, formerly Mount Olive Baptist Church. And um, he is just an amazing husband. Um, so glad to be his rib. I know that's right. With some She's sauce that rib with some sauce, sauce on that rib. rib. Sauce. That <laughs> rib has sauce, y'all. It's saucy. <laughs> and um, he, I mean, he's just an awesome provider, awesome protector, of course, awesome priest. And I said those other two first because all of those are what matter. Yeah. Um, when you have a husband, and um, I'm just better, better because. My, my life is complete and his life is complete and we, we just do great things together. We do ministry together. He allows me to be me. Oh my goodness. I was just about to ask to you be because me. you are a first lady and there's a lot of challenges um, that come with being a first lady because there are expectations for a first lady. You know, when people expect you to be this and to be that, how do you deal with those um, unrealistic expectations as a first lady? I think for myself, I am probably one of the most transparent first lady and I am probably one of the most and I'm not throwing off on anybody else nobody I'm else. probably one of the most real first ladies because while it takes a special person to be a first lady mm -hmm. we are still human yes and I don't use my humanity for an excuse to have horrible behavior Thank however you. I'm not going to allow you to build a platform to knock me off of it mm -hmm. oh you ain't about to knock no. Not Angela Cadwell down. You can forget that. No. First Lady Angela Cadwell is not about to let you no, knock no. her down. No, See, you, I, you ain't even the kind. I already no, know that. I'm not buying it. <laughs> if somebody even think about it, I'm going to tell you, don't, don't go do that it. way. It's the wrong direction. One way street. Because they expect way. you to try to put you in this box. A yes, First Lady supposed to do this. Yes, a First Lady do that. And so what do you, how do you handle that? I mean. And so first of all, I, I'm probably a little different. Maybe when I was in the world, I probably would have had a different response, but I believe that a lot of things that people attack us with are spiritual issues. Mm -hmm. And first lady is not a biblical term for number one. Elect lady is. Okay. Um, and there are qualifications um, that people put on you that are not biblical mm -hmm. for just the first lady. We're all expected to live a certain way. And because I'm married to the pastor, yes, that does put me up front. Yes, people can watch me. But I don't allow them to uh, shape me into what they want me to be. Okay, so give me an example. Somebody come up to you and say, hey, first lady, you know, you're supposed to be doing this. Um, so for me, that's a little bit of a different uh, conversation because most times the conversation is, hey, first lady, you're supposed to be preaching. 
hey, First Lady, what are you doing in ministry? Like, you have to be a preacher to be a pastor's wife, which right. is not true. Not the truth. Um, there's a lot of unhappy women who are not ministers who have been pushed into that lane. And you can tell. Yes. You can they're tell. they're unhappy and they're miserable because they're miserable because they're trying to fit into something God never called them to mm -hmm. do. Um, for me, it's my dress. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. my clothes. Because mm -hmm. she know how to dress. It's my clothes. She know I, how to dress. Well, thank you, sis. I learned from the best. Oh, come on. I'm trying to keep up <laughs> with her, okay? <laughs> so, um, I wore a uh, long floral sundress to church one Sunday. All the way to the floor. All the way to the floor. To the floor. And they, the floor. who had a problem with that? And, hold on, they didn't say anything the Sunday I wore the sundress. But the next week, I wore a suit. Now, I've been wearing suits before I knew this pastor was on the earth. I've been wearing suits since I was 21. Uh -huh. So I've been in church all Before my life. Before you right. even were first lady, mm -hmm. okay. you I were wearing, wearing suits. And long dresses, too. Okay. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. This lady says to me, now that's what a first lady is supposed to look like. You should have that. If I, if I had a man, she would have got the <laughs> She would have got so, the <laughs> Don't take that. Don't do it at church. <laughs> you saw it here first. So, um, I said... What's what a first lady is supposed to look like? And she said, you know, you, you have on a suit and, you know, you have on your stockings and your heels. And what you had on last week, that wasn't it. Oh, you, did you just come for what? me? That was a statue see or a fair see? What, what, what? Uh -huh. <laughs> she was about to be a knocked out <laughs> Anyway, y'all pray for the first lady. Right, pray for her. Um, I said. Well, no, pray I, for the lady. <laughs> she don't get knocked out. For that out. spirit. You know. <laughs> so I, I, I said, um. I didn't know that there was a certain uh, way that a first lady is supposed to And where's to that book at? Oh, it's, where's it's the not. Book? Where's the book? Because I've seen first lady in jeans. I promise I first you. I've seen uh, first lady in jogging suits. Yes. I've, I've seen first ladies in skirts, Absolutely. suits, dresses, all type of stuff. Absolutely. So where's the book that says first ladies are only supposed to wear this? The only thing that we are responsible is making sure that we are clean Modest and we dress appropriately. That is absolutely that we're not looking like a woman of the street. I'm trying to tell you. know, you. but a long dress? Come right, on. absolutely. And it, it just, it, it, it was, this was the beginning though, when I, probably near the beginning when we first got married, maybe about my first or second year. And um, I had to, you know, I've been in church so long mm -hmm. and I have watched first ladies and, and the typical stereotype for first ladies is the suit and the hat. I don't wear the hats. The St. John. Suit, the by same the way, <laughs> um, depends on where churches belong to. Right, everybody can't go to St. John. Uh, no, um, everybody can't um, wear no St. John. St. John is expensive, <laughs> and they're Let's very expensive. Let's be clear: <laughs> the jacket is seventeen hundred dollars. The jacket, that's the low end. The jacket. Okay, so uh -huh. just so y'all know. Uh -huh. yeah. But uh, <laughs> so I knew what the typical first lady dressed like, mm -hmm. but that's not me. Right. I'm not them. Mm -hmm. We're different. Let me be clear to you, ladies, especially for those of you who do go to church. These are not the first ladies from the past. I don't have anything against them. And I love them. That and I think they're for our learning. But how, I need to be who I am. I'm not a cookie cutter first lady. There you don't go. cut me out in the yeah. shape of somebody else. Mm -hmm. I'm an individual. My husband approves of how I dress. As a matter of fact, he buys some of my dresses. He and buys them. Take that. Right. <laughs> and so, when, as long as he's good with it, and what that's he right. says to me is, are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. And when I say yes, that's the end of the story. That's in the, 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 the head of the household yes. has spoken. Yes. So ma'am, period. Get the, get the fan. <laughs>
she has every excuse, every excuse to be depressed, every excuse to feel shame and pain, because guess what? She's been divorced twice. She's on her third marriage, but you know what? She is living life like it is golden, and she is about to teach you how to do it as well. And so come on and join me as we join the First Lady Angela Catwell. But before we do that, I'm going down the flat. Come on with me, y'all. Woo! <laughs> so let's talk about kids. And you know, I mean, you have seven. So first of all, I want to say you've been, this is not your first marriage. No. And no. so how many times have you been married? So this is my third marriage. Third Blood marriage. still works. Mm -hmm. I guess you get it right after the trend. So right. I'm just playing. <laughs> You just gotta grow up and get it right. Right. All right. Well, there's a there's a couple questions I want to ask from that, but first, um, I want to ask. Okay, you've been married for eleven years. Mm -hmm. So how many? Do you have any children with him? No, we have none together. Okay, so he came in with how many children? He came in with three, and I came in with four. You came in with four. Yes. And so this is your third marriage, and so let's deal with that for a minute Absolutely. before we get to the children. Um, how do you deal with, you know, um. You know, some people would try to shame you or even the shame could even come from yourself mm -hmm. about, man, um, I'm on my third marriage. You know, sometimes that can mess with you as a woman, especially a woman of God. So how do you deal with that? So for me, I will be honest with you. Uh, when when I met my current husband, I called him my brother mm -hmm. because in my, my, in my mind, um, if you've already done this twice um, and you have failed miserably um, at doing it, then you don't need to be married. That was my thought process. Mm -hmm. That was what the enemy fed me and I ate it. Yeah. And so when I met him, I almost missed it because I was still living in condemnation yes. of what I wasn't and didn't do before. But I learned some things from those experiences which makes me who I am today. Mm -hmm. And so um, those you know, failed marriages, they do wreak havoc on you. You do have a responsibility to work through and think through and talk about whether it's with yourself and God or whether it's with someone else on what you did to, to make, you know, that marriage fail because it's two people that fail the marriage, Absolutely. not one. Mm -hmm. no, sisters, don't be fooled. Yeah, sisters, don't, don't be fooled. Don't think it's just your fault if it doesn't work. It takes two to make it work and it takes two to break it apart. Mm -hmm. And yes, you can do some things to hinder it. Yes. But I just believe that, you know, when if you've done it and, and, and you're divorced and you're single and you want to be married again, there is hope. I'm telling you, look at me. Yeah, look at absolutely. Me. And I can I, and, and you know what? I, I want to go back to the word. The word says there is no condemnation in those that are in Christ. That's right. And there are so many times that we could, you know, we don't get it. I tell you, if I'd have married early, which I almost did a couple of times, mm -hmm. I could have been on my fifth marriage. Mm -hmm. OK, Absolutely. I could have jacked up. But we want, I want to also remind people that though you don't have the paper when you get married, the fact that you keep having sex with one person, one person after the next, you're, still married. you're actually marrying every person, Absolutely. though you have not physically because back in the day they didn't have a court that you no, went to no. all you in order to to what say that you were married you? what mm -hmm. made you connected was consummation which was sex folks Absolutely. sex is what make you married to somebody so the, you know for for some people um who've been married um they feel shame but shoot there's a lot of people out there that's been married unofficially Absolutely. and have fallen into sin several times but we don't see it because they don't have the paper that's right. so i thank god for you that you have no shame you got through that and yeah. you didn't let let it stop you because right. look what you ain't missing out right now a great and amazing great, husband, great husband yes. yes yes so i have no complaints i promise i don't you should say i promise i don't, I don't have, have no, no complaints. complaints he's a good man for real he's he has no need to spoil you <laughs> Be because he has, he has the first lady, uh huh, uh -huh. and she got it all uh -huh. together. together. Okay, yeah. together. That's because she got Jesus. That's all right, because you know we ain't nothing without him, right? Without and, him. Uh, just a raggedy saucy Thank God mess. That he's a great teacher. Yes, he is. He's a great. And teacher. so we work on this perfection every day. And with that, I want to ask you this because a lot of questions are coming in for Solution Sundays, and that's why I have you on the show. Okay. Because there's a lot of women that one who've been married multiple times, who've been in failed relationships, mm -hmm. and so we dealt with that. But also the blended family my, issue my, my. is huge. It is huge. And I know we're that you speak greatly. Mm -hmm. I know you were writing a book on it, mm -hmm. and but you speak highly on that because you deal with that. And yes. I have never seen somebody that do the blended family so well as, as you Jesus. do. 
Oh my goodness. I don't know what you're doing. I don't even know because I can't speak to that, but I know you can. Let, let me tell you this. When when something is a is and, and I don't want to say that if you're having an issue in your blended families, I don't want to make it like we're perfect. Mm -hmm. However, though, when when we finally decided to be a family, our kids meshed like a puzzle. It was almost like chopping the pieces in the place, and I was kind of confused. I'm like, wait a minute. I was <laughs> like, don't supposed to like this each other. Perfect, right? <laughs> Something wrong, Satan? <laughs> I'm gonna rebuke you. What you doing? Because <laughs> this don't look good. Right. It look too good. Right. But what I found out was for our family, um, there's five boys and two girls. And the youngest two boys, his baby boy and my baby boy, it was a whole wreck. Oh my goodness. His baby boy felt like he took his daddy. Yeah. And my baby boy felt like he took his mommy. So he didn't like my mm. husband. And his son didn't even come over. Oh wow! How old were they? How time. old were the baby boys? Oh my gosh! Lord have mercy. Ten years ago, we were married. So the white, the white was ten. No, the white was nine. Mm -hmm. And Stephen was seven. Okay. And I thought it would be easier for the seven-year-old no, because they're still young. Because they're still used to. Because my husband is a super everything: a super dad, a super husband, a super pastor. Everything he does, he goes all out. That's super, super, says. super sign. I like that. So, um, he did everything with his boys. He cooked for them. He fed them. They hung out together. They played golf. They played that. I mean, every you name it, they do it. They've done it. Wow. He's the dad. He's the dad that shows up to the games. He's calling from the side. He pro care well, team care well all day and twice on Sunday. Wow. So, that is amazing. to now have to share with other people. Mm -hmm. Except your two brothers. It's fine if it's my two brothers, but now who are these other who are these other five folks? This lady and these kids. Where right. they come from? Who are they? Why are they here? And why is my daddy hugging on her and not on me? Right. And when are they leaving? Right. Like, <laughs> when what, are you leaving? When leaving? <laughs> what time? What? Why y'all? Because I'm gonna escort you what, to the door. I don't understand what, why y'all leaving? Y'all not? Why y'all come? What, what's the purpose? So um, we had to. I'm telling you, time was a process. You gotta know that we say. Time heals all wounds. I don't agree with that. I say all wounds heal in time. Um, it's a difference. Mm -hmm. That's um, good. I like that. And it took the, the the time for us to get to know each other. To yeah. actually know that I love you and you are part of the family and being the same thing with my son. Yeah. Um, it's not changing uh, the dynamic of me being your mother or him being your father. You need to let your children know this doesn't change the dynamic of who I am to you. This changes the fact that we've added people to the family and now we have more people to love you, especially when they're little children. Yes, they need to yes. know that they still have their place. Mm -hmm. They need to know that they're not being put out. They need to know that, you know, how to share. This is a great uh, lesson in sharing, teaching them how to share because we have a lot of selfish kids. Oh, my goodness. All, all my kids are selfish. selfish. All of them. Every last one. Mine too, all seven. And they all, me and my husband, but they all selfish. I promise you. They I don't even want to give me a bite of their sandwich. <laughs> and I made the sandwich. <laughs> they don't want to share with me. I asked my I'm son for a fry one day. He looked at me like I was a stranger. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm the one that bought the fry. Right. And you can't give me one? I'm taking the That's whole thing. Yeah. They do. So, they do. so, so how did, because here's the thing. I, what I realized that it all falls, you know, even in when you go to um, leadership um, conferences and mm -hmm. meetings, you know, they say, you know, um, Every problem that you have in an organization, it falls from the head. Mm -hmm. And so with you and your husband being the head, you know, your husband being the head of the family and you right. being right there in partnership with him, I know that in order for that to work, that blend, that communication with the kids, yes. what did y'all do as husband and wife? And what did you guys, did you guys sit down and did you talk about it? About this is how we're going to go about bringing them to bringing them together in harmony and in peace. How did that work? So what I'll say is, uh, in, in our dynamic, and I, I'll talk about what people can do in a smaller dynamic, because for us, it's a big it's a big picture. It's seven kids. It's not like a boy and a girl, wow. and you're bringing them together. This is two girls and five boys. This is seven kids. This is a five lot of people. Five boys. Five boys. Just refrigerator on four. How many Listen, Linda, as that little boy say, honey. Yeah, I have two refrigerators and a deep freezer. One in the basement, one upstairs, and we had a deep freeze. Yes. 
But I cook a lot. I cook a lot of food. Oh, yeah. Like, too. literally, I was cooking pans. You have no like, choice. Y'all have a choice. Because they're greedy. And greedy. In, in order to have enough for the next day. No, it's not enough for the next oh. day. <laughs> no leftovers. They get up in the middle of the night and eat. Oh, my goodness. Leftovers gone. No oh, my leftovers. goodness. We never really had the talk mm -hmm. to say we're one family. This is this or this is that. We, we never had that talk. Uh, the kids handled each other. However, though, we did do family things together, family movies, yes. amazing, you know, the amusement park, yes. things of that nature that, that kept us as a family. Mm -hmm. when, whenever um, there was something, an anniversary or something together, and um, something would happen, we would call all of the kids up. When my husband goes out to preach, he introduces each one of them individually before he preaches. He says, this is, you know, Erica. She just graduated from Eastern. This is Dominique. She's getting ready to graduate from her we school. Honor so we honor all of the children. That's Nobody a lot of birthdays. Gets That's left. a lot of birthdays, it's too. A lot. And the crazy part is they're almost all close together. Oh, my goodness. We have some at the beginning of the year and the rest are at the end of the year. So it's like Christmas and Thanksgiving. We're birthday and all the way through to June. Oh, wow. That yeah. is amazing. So let me ask you something. I know in my, my husband, um, we had a conversation um, uh, early on in our marriage when our kids were little. And my husband, we sat down and he said, you know, one thing we cannot do is allow our kids to play us against one another. Because you know those little people will do it. They will play you up against each other yes. because they know who's the soft yes, one. Yes, yes. They know who's the hard one. Mm -hmm. They know who's going to say yes to one mm -hmm. issue and no to another issue. And so they will try. So my husband put a rule in place and he said, okay, when you come to me and I tell you no, and then you go to your mama mm -hmm. and ask the fact that you asked her. Right. That's an automatic punishment or whooping. Absolutely. You're getting your butt in trouble for that because... Mm -hmm. That'll end up putting us up against Absolutely. each other. And Absolutely. so whatever daddy says or whatever mommy says, That's go. That's right. And, and and so what do you guys do? What did you guys put in place to make sure? Because there's seven of them. And I know sometimes kids can say, well, my mama let me do it. He's not going to let me do it. But I'm going to go to my mama. So because um, I'm more of a disciplinarian. Um, oh, you, in the house. You're the, you're the tough one. I'm the hood in the house. <laughs> Ah, you back break your neck. Who she mac and be so, with y'all? Uh, <laughs> that's a Detroit y'all. That's a uh, Detroit saying. Break your um, snatch the spine out. That's what I told them. They was young. Snatch the whole spine out. You walking bent over. So <laughs> no, seriously, <laughs> seriously though, I I'm the disciplinarian more so, and so I think when we when we got married, I don't think we thought about those things, and so when when trial and error is what kind of helped us with that. And then when I would find out that they went, I would address them. And once I addressed it, I didn't have to address it again. Mm -hmm. Because I let them know, I said, I'm not your, for, for you know, his kids. Because we don't say step in our house. Yeah, yeah. It's not my like stepchildren. These are my children. Absolutely. And um, I fed them so much they look like them. <laughs> but anyway, um, my grandma used to say, um, they know uh, my limits. Mm -hmm. And once I addressed it, I said, I'm not your biological mother. But I am... A mother figure. That's right. And if you're going to be in this house, uh -huh. in this wow, house, he's the king uh -huh. of the castle. Yeah, there is. I sit by his side. Uh huh. As the queen, yes, ma'am. And that makes us both rulers. Uh huh. We rule really So here. when you come against the ruler, you get punished. You're going to get the beat down. That's all. That's right. And period. Just you heard so that. You have to put your come foot up against down. It. Yeah. No. I think we tiptoe as splendid families. Okay. We tiptoe with the children because we don't want them to not like us. Yes. But let me help you with this. Oh, mm -hmm. let me, please. Mm -hmm. That's punish. a good one. Wait a minute. I need y'all to, you know, <laughs> stop everything. <laughs> That's a good one. You tiptoe. But what, okay, so what's the secret? Because I know people, I, I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to, maybe they're not going to like me or, so mm -hmm. talk to them. Hurt Come on. their feelings today. Hurt it. Or be disrespected tomorrow. Oh, say that again. Hurt their feelings today. Hurt them. Or be disrespected tomorrow. Oh my because goodness. Because you and your spouse, even if you haven't talked as children, because my spouse and I did talk, while we may have not talked as a family, we talked as husband and wife to the effect, not about the, you know, he asked you, you know, if they ask you and ask me, not that, but to the effect that whatever you have to do, don't come telling me what a kid did. You address it. Yes, because yes. if you never address it, They'll figure they never have to do what you say. That's right. And they'll disrespect you. Absolutely. Every child up under the I'm house got to know who's ruling over the here. The first. There you go. You have to. The Bible says that if you spare the rod, 
spoil the child. There you go. The Bible says beat them and they won't die. It's in there. You'll Don't save their important. soul That's if you, you beat them. If you beat them, you'll save them. You beat them. But, but <laughs> listen, I'm trying to tell you. you Don't kill them. No, but beat them. Them. There's a booty that's oh, got enough cushion. That's what he gave it to that's, you that's, for. that's what that's for. Actually, <laughs> God put something in children, in all of us, mm -hmm. to the place where we desire to be corrected. We just don't really know what that Absolutely. is. Absolutely. And when we get older, we're appreciative of and it. And we brag about it all day long. Everybody but, brag and, and about we, it. We all receive whoopings. Well, the people I know. That's right. I, the I, people I, I know. Yeah. I, I went, my, got my own switch uh -huh. off the tree. Um, when I was a kid and the thing about it is is that once you get that it makes you an awesome adult wait a minute let's go back you know me and you must have lived down the street because my mama had me going I wonder was that the same it's bush the same bush you <laughs> have to snatch the leaves off the uh -huh. and they shake like I don't know what they you know, and if you wave them they got a yeah, uh -huh. they got a sound yes, to it Lord, that you like that, 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 mm. that alone yeah. <laughs> You know what? I enjoy walking the runway of life, but someone else does too. First Lady Angela Cadwell, man, I'm telling you, she is walking the runway of life and she's doing it at a whole nother level. Not only is she a first lady, a wife, a mother of seven children and running a church. Oh my goodness. This woman is the top sales director of, you know what? I'm just going to let her share with you where she is doing it big. Cause y'all, let me just give you this little hint. She's not only one, one not two, not three, but four cars. This girl is doing it at a whole nother level. She is really living the better wife, better life, better wife, better life life. She is doing it and she's doing it well. So come on and join me as I continue my interview with the first lady, Angela Cadwell. Hey everybody, welcome back to Solution Sundays. I am still with the amazing, beautiful first lady, Angela Cadwell. And let me tell you something else that's a great and amazing about her. She is a senior sales, ex I'm saying that wrong. That's okay. Say it, say it for me. I am a senior sales director with Mary Kay Cosmetics. There you go. And she is absolutely amazing. And let me tell you what she's done. She won the car, y'all. But not just one. Then you win. This is my fourth free car. Fourth free car. That's because you're fourth doing your car. thing. Listen, I'm telling you, you have to make it happen. Oh you my goodness. You have to make it happen. Even though my husband said I didn't have to work and all those kind of things, when I saw a need in our family, I said, you know what? I'm going to jump in, I'm going to pitch in, and I'm going to make it happen. Oh, that is awesome. Some women think that, you know, um, it's, it's really a choice up to the husband and the wife if the wife is going to That's work right. or if she's going to go right. out. But there's nothing wrong with the woman nothing at working all. Nothing at all. and doing her thing. And as a matter of fact, I don't really want to sit around the house and do a bunch at of all. I mean, no. come on, I I'm just don't want to do it. No. I mean, there was a time my kids were younger and I was working then. Right. And I didn't work, want to work then. But now I don't. I want to do me. I want yes. to do what makes me fun. So this, That's right. how do you feel selling Mary Kay? What has it done for you since you started? Mary Kay has matured me, believe it or not. What a lot of people don't know about Mary Kay is that it's a Christian company. Everything that Mary Kay does is God first, family second, career third. That's the model for the company. Wow, I love it's that. It's in like 38 countries and whoever sells Mary Kay in other countries, the country has to leave it. God first, family second, career third. So we're not just selling makeup, we're changing lives. Come on now. We are changing no lives with lipstick, baby. Too. I'm telling you, <laughs> they, you think it's just skincare? No, when I sit down at a woman's table and I hear about how she hasn't done anything for herself in so long. I hear about how um, she wants to do something to change her life. And when they hear my story and hear how many children I have and how many times I've been there, I mean, you get to be family with your customers. And then when you bring them on your team and help them reach a goal, because this is something you do for you. Yes. And this is why you started it, right? Absolutely. Because you, you were telling me earlier that you, you went to one of the meetings just to support someone, yes. right? Yes, I went to a skincare class for one of our trustees who was just starting her business. And I went to go support. And um, I talked to the director, and she asked me what I did for myself. After uh -oh. everything I named, I told her I was too busy to do Mary Kay. And she said, well, what do you do for you? <laughs> That's it. And I said, you know what, nothing. And she said, well, what do you really want? And I had been asking God for a car. And she told me Mary Kay gives away free cars. Free cars? Did you say free cars? Free. <laughs> and if it's free, 
It's for me. It's for me. <laughs> so um, I, I, I started the process and never dawned on me that I wouldn't win. I didn't know anybody who had a Mary Kay car. I didn't know anybody who even sold Mary Kay with the exception of our trustee that we had came to support. And three months later, I won a car. Three months, three months later? later? Three months later. I think that was a good investment. It was a great investment. I think that's a good investment. A three great. months and a new a free car? Free car. Sign me up. And I've won right. three more since then. <laughs> three more. Three so more. what do you? What kind of car do you have? So currently I have a 2017 Chevy Equinox. So we have the Chevy Cruze, the Chevy Equinox, um, the four, what is that? I can't even think of the name of the other car. And then finally, the pink Cadillac. We just got rid of the BMW 325i, which was also free. You you had, they, they, they gave gave you? BMW 325i, and they paid a car note on that too. They I paid a car note on all the cars. Oh my goodness. All paid car note? I hate car notes. I hate I it. haven't had one in five years. I wouldn't know what to do with one. Oh my <laughs> goodness. That is amazing. God is awesome. Oh, he, he is, is awesome. So awesome. And you did that for yourself. I did that for me. So what do you want to say to women out there who are, you know, you might not know your purpose or you're trying to figure out what to do. You know, you, you may be thinking that you have to give your everything and ev all your stuff to your children and your husband. What would you say to that lady? I would say you need to take some time out for you, even if it's just 10 minutes a day. Sometimes you don't have a lot of time, but I, I admonish women to find some time for you. I don't care if it's go to the bathroom and close the door, lock it. Yes. Lock it. That's and when the sanctuary. They knock, yes. Wherever you can find. Or in your car, in, in the car, driveway, or in before the you go in. Before mm -hmm. they know that you're home, just That's sit right. there for a minute. That's <laughs> right. Go to the park. Go, you know, wherever you can find a place to do something for you. And then secondly, thank you. Thank you. Secondly, I would say to you all, you're looking, for, a lot of ladies are looking for opportunities. They're saying, God, give me more income. They're saying, God, I need something to help my life. God, I want to find out what my purpose is. And, and, and we're looking at the packaging of things and not looking into what it's really about. Yes. And so while I'm, why I'm, while I'm not um, saying direct marketing is it, it may be it. But right. what about the book? Yes. What about, what, what story in your life is going to help somebody else? What talk show right. is going to help somebody Absolutely. else? Absolutely. This is the greatest thing ever because nobody ever addresses the issues of the wife or the marriage. Yes. This, is, this is phenomenal. Praise God. Uh, because so many women are looking for answers and somebody has to do something about it. And yes. I'm just so just elated to be a part of even talking about uh, my laundry. Yes. Dirty and clean. Yes. Um, because it's all laundry. That's right. And at Absolutely. the end of the day, you have to know what you need. And sometimes the difference between you saying and a nervous breakdown is 10 minutes of a long time. Wow. 10 minutes of a long time. Wow. Know that you're worth a long time. Yes. You're going to need it. Even with me and my husband, as much as we love each other, we understand that we get on each other's nerves at some point. Yes. So he may go out for a drive. I may go sit out on the deck. You need a moment. You need a moment. You need I mean, a let's moment. Let's just be clear. You, you need a moment. I'll be back. It's, and it's okay. Give me an hour or two. It's okay. Just sit and have lunch with yourself. <laughs> I mean, I love spending time with myself, but I yes. want to also speak to those ladies, as, and you can talk with me with okay. this, about really finding out what you enjoy doing in life. Yes. What do you like doing? Absolutely. I mean, whatever you like doing, even if it's something as simple as planting flowers, there's someone that will pay you to plant their flowers. Mm -hmm. I will. Yeah. I, I don't like planting flowers. That ain't fun to me. Some people say, oh, it just relaxes me. It does this to me. I can't stand it. It <laughs> aggravates me. But I will pay somebody right. to plant my flowers. Right. So even something as simple as that, you know how to braid hair. I yes. mean, you may be a, a person that love numbers and accounting. That's Someone right. needs you to run their accounting That's right. business. That's right. I mean, there's always something. Don't just give it up because right. you got kids and you have a husband. There's a side of you that needs to come out. And, and there's a world that is missing when we don't br uh, bring birth to that thing that God has put inside How about of this? us. To my OCD sisters who likes everything to be organized, start an organized a business, organizing closets, organizing houses, organizing drawers, organizing bills, helping to put things into their prospective places, yes. budgeting. If you're great at budgeting, women need help budgeting their yes. money. Um, looking, doing the forecast of what's coming up and how much money you're going to need. Whatever or even planning. Absolutely. I mean, just you, you have so much to do in your life. You need someone to help you how to plan and also how to execute that plan. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you might be a great planner. Another, I mean, we're going to go back to the whole organizer. If you're an organizer, I want you to call me, inbox me, because I'm telling you, I, 
I look at stuff and, and I'm like, now where do you put this here? Mm -hmm. I'm a big picture girl. I'm right. not a small picture girl. I hate little. Th th where do you put In all that details, stuff? Right. But I love to be organized. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how to organize. Right. But I would. Love, that's why I connect. Most of my girlfriends do stuff that I don't know how to do and they're great in things that I don't know how to do. Why? Because I need them in my life. So mm -hmm. I can give them what I have, they can give me what That's they right. have. And guess what? Fitly joined together, we build one another That's up. That's right. That's right. This is the I, way. I, I think that we look at too, we're looking too deep. The yes. answer is like right in your face. But I think some of you are saying, everybody's doing this. And yes. everybody, but they're not you. They're not you. They don't have your fingerprint. That's what makes you different. Your fingerprint on an assignment, on the exact same assignment as someone else, is going to look totally different That's than right. what you would do yourself. Stop looking at what everybody else is doing and focus on what makes you happy. What makes you happy and what solves another person's problem. Like right now, we keep having hot flashes. That's why we got you this fan. <laughs> this man solves a problem. <laughs> yes, it does. These hot flashes are coming I'm while you. we in the sun trying to tape and talk to you. Listen. Okay? <laughs> So we're going to get out of here, but we're going to see y'all in another minute because guess what? We got some more shopping to do, okay? <laughs> Tell our husbands we'll be back in a little while. See y'all yeah. later. <laughs> hey, everybody. Yeah, that's right. I like my smoothie sweet. Mm -hmm. But I like my marriage sexy. That's right. Me and First Lady Angela Cadwell is taking this conversation up to a sexy level. So if you are a wife and you're having troubles in your sex life, girl, you want to listen to this next segment? Because guess what? We're going to keep it sweet mm -hmm, and we're going to keep it sexy. So come on and join us. And listen, the Bible says the wife cares for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Let me tell you some things that are of the world. First of all, your behind that's of the world. So he's going to need you to drop it like it's hot. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to say. To God said, defraud ye not, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. He said, defraud ye not to one. He's talking about the husband That's and wife. Right. He said, defraud ye not one another. He's talking about sex. Yes. He said, because the enemy, he said, the enemy will come in and get you for yes, your inconsistency. He, he said, the only time you should not fasting, have sex is fasting and, and prayer. And, and even you then, you, you got to get an agreement. Because if everybody's doing a 40-day fast, right. you got to turn to your spouse That's and say, right. baby. Can you do 40? Right. He might be like, uh, I can do two days. You should need to tell everybody, I can only do two days. That's, That's all I'm doing. That's it. Because guess what? Your obedience is unto your husband. You got to respect. Right. And guess what? He might not be able to last 40 days. Absolutely. You don't want him tempted to go outside because let me help you understand the enemy will try to tempt him. Oh my goodness. Please understand that. He's tempting a wife. Even, even not taking off time. Mm -hmm. He's trying to tempt her. So make sure you take care of him. Take the rollers out of your head. Come on, take them out. That dirty scarf. Uh huh. Wash that it, you please. wear and wrap your head with. Mm -hmm. Look, the man want to be. He wants to uh, be. I'm trying to find a clean word. He want to be attractive and he, he wants, wants to be, to be drawn, drawn to you. To you. Okay. That's right. So when you come to make love to him with rollers and a scarf and a flannel nightgown. And, and let me be honest, let's bring balance to that. The longer you're married, you're going to find out. If they're really, really ready to have sex, they don't care how you look. <laughs> you can That's be sleep and snowing, and he just went up and had to go to the bathroom and came back and was like, right. that scarf is looking real attractive. Right. But guess what? We are open and ready for him even at 2 o'clock in the morning, even though it may be frustrating. But he needs it right then. And I know sometimes for us, we'll be honest, it can be frustrating. Like, I got to get up at 6 o'clock and you wake me up, up at 2 o'clock. Yeah. Girl, my Roll husband, over, get on. <laughs> my husband, girl, my husband said, this is how bad they need it. My husband said, oh, you ain't got to be up. Just turn around. <laughs> Turn around. That's how bad. He said, just turn around. You ain't got to say up. That's how bad they need it. Yeah, and you it. sitting there holding out. Listen, if you got to go get counseling, do it. Listen, there's free counseling out there. You can go to your church. Mm -hmm. If you don't even go to a church, you can find a church and go in there and get counseling. That's right. That's because, right. And, and, and if you're not going to church, that's maybe the reason why you're in the issue that you're... You, you, you need Jesus in your marriage. And some people are in the church and having problems. Yes, they are. Now, how can you be getting the word on a regular basis and not have freedom and joy and peace in your marriage? I'm going to tell you how. When you don't put that word to action and when you're not getting that word outside of church. Joshua 1 and 8 says, the book of this law, yes. on your lips, meditate day, day and night. And he night. said that you'll be careful to do it. That's right. So you'll be careful not to defraud your husband. That's right. So you be careful to honor him. And even the husbands, they are husbands. Listen, we're talking about women withholding it. What about the men? I've had women call me and say, listen, it's my husband. I want some sex. 
Lord, oh Jesus, my. I do know some people like that. Oh like my you just said that. And 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 that's not good. husbands need to understand. You might need it a little bit more than us, but I promise you we need it. I promise you. And when you turn forty, the women, the fire goes a little bit higher. Understand what I'm trying to say? And menopause take it up to a whole other okay. level. Okay. So so sir. Sir, the sirs who are watching, I'm gonna need you to listen. Seat. Sir, sir, I need you to work it out. Work it. Get in the gym. Work the thing. Do what you gotta do. Uh -huh. Okay. Jumping jacks. Uh -huh. I don't care what you gotta do. That's it. I'm gonna need you to breathe. Work uh, it I out. ain't gonna say that. Do something. <laughs> we also have to learn how to satisfy one another. In sex, it's not talked about enough in church about what is what is good satisfaction, what is bad satisfaction, That's right. what is what is right in the bed because people take the scripture, the bed is undefiled, and they run miles and say it's time to they, get real they take freaky. It out of I'm gonna need you to hold your freak off for a minute. Yeah. Because God, that that word says to keep it pure. Yes. To keep it holy. Yes. And when you're watching X-rated movies. In order to get enticed by each other, that's not how we do that. No, no. You're you're actually opening the door um, for the spirit of uh, going for you to go out and, and desire somebody else. Yeah, yeah. You're, and here's you're the, opening the door for that. Do you know there's a um, there's a huge movement on women using toys oh, no. to enjoy themselves and they think because they're married it's okay let me let me explain something to you there are people there are, I, I, I've known people and I'm not going to say any names that where the wife started using a toy to enjoy herself and she was in be in the bathroom by herself with it that first of all you gotta understand a man cannot complete compete with a vibrator he cannot no. He's not the energizer so buddy. He can't keep going and going and right. going. He can't. So what happens is you get used to that and satisfying yourself. You're That's actually right. committing adultery mm -hmm. against your husband mm -hmm. or yourself. That's right. When you are master, that's a that's a form of masturbation. Mm -hmm. You start to commit adultery against your husband, and to the point you're going to get so used to that your husband will not be able to compete. That's with right. That. When when you're speaking about um, the bear being undefiled. Uh, that, that word also translates to sex with anybody besides your husband or wife. Toys, fingers, mouth, any of that. Understand? Anybody outside. Any outside. 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 Of your marriage. Mm -hmm. Is what the, that's, that's right. the other thing anybody. that translates to. So anybody, but, nobody try to be. You don't have supposed to have nobody putting no, their mouth on you. Your nobody putting your hands on you, but your husband. Husband. Nobody. Husband. You have walked on the other side because whenever the you're using you, sex parts, you are having sex all day long. That's what oral sex. It has the word sex on it all day long. Mm -hmm. All day long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything that you use that um, um, that's going to get you. To an orgasm, that's right. Boo boo, you haven't said. That's it. You so haven't. Stop saying it. It's not because it it's is. It's not. It's not. And so, and the other thing is, is people find it hard to communicate to their partner about, you know, satisfying them. Like for instance, I've met wives who've been married 15 years and never had an orgasm. Is that? Now that's the dumb. Okay, so that's now I'm gonna have to do this thing. Come on, we got. <laughs> you get the face. Oh okay, yeah, you get. You get. Are you crazy? You come out 15 years and you never had an orgasm? I'm, I am confused. I, I don't even know how to. And you don't want to take a sip of water on that. Why? why? We don't have to talk. Cause you just you just threw me out in the middle field. We can't work. I can't think. We maybe you haven't experienced an orgasm. That's why you're not mad enough. Cause once you experience one, you gonna tell them what to do every time. Yeah, every sure single happened. time, you ain't gonna have a time. You ain't gonna have a problem with talking to them about it. Because once you experience, I, I'm sure that a person who's been in a marriage for a long time and haven't experienced an no orgasm and said, "I don't have to have sex," you have not experienced a real no, you orgasm. Have you you have been You've been faking a long time. You've been you've been confused. Mm -hmm. Somebody lied to you mm -hmm. because. God made the orgasm to blow your mind off and I have your kids spent. Yep, spent off. <laughs> I was pushing your cat like <laughs> I tell my husband, I'm gonna need you to duck because you you Sir, might get hurt. Yeah. Have you yeah. ever looked at, you know, uh, and, and we're having good conversation. We come on marriage, y'all, so we can yes. go there. 
when, when you when your husband allow you to experience experience an orgasm, you sometimes look at him and say, "What is your neighbor get? Because your right. mind is gone." Oh, okay. I would even say to you, if you haven't cried doing an orgasm, you ain't you ain't had an orgasm Some yet. Wrong. Have you cried? Uh huh. Uh-huh. Nice tears. tears. Yeah, mm-hmm. nice little tears. Say some beautiful They're tears beautiful. too. They're I remember beautiful. the first time that happened. I was like, "Am I? Is this is this right. wet up real? <laughs> is this real?" <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. I think that, that, it. that you might want to talk to your husband about having a meeting with just men or teaching him how to get the woman yes. there. Let, let me tell you this. I can speak to this subject, and, I, and I, I'm not trying to. I hope nobody watching this that knows me. But if it is, oh well. <laughs> Don't tell you. Shame the devil. They're going to know you. <laughs> sorry, y'all. Sorry, exes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had experienced that, but I hadn't experienced that until I experienced a husband. This husband. This husband. Wow. So I, when I, it, ha- it happened to me with him, and I hadn't felt it before. That's why you needed to do. Yeah. I'm not gonna finish. Wow. So, I see. I was. I was gone. Like, and then you wait a minute. That's when you say, "Yeah, you the one." Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. You were God serious. <laughs> Listen here. I called my best friend. I said, I got a question and please don't judge. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Tell me the truth, too. I said, what? I said, what do you have? Ain't nobody I said, tell me. She said, boo. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. You, you have I have that, that same story. And I said, yeah. oh my God. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. to tell me all this time. All this time. That I thought something was happening. Well, nothing, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Because sometimes you try to make it happen. And yes. make it seem like, no, yes. you're not there yet. Believe me, it happens to you. You don't happen to it. it yes, it does. It's going to come. Yes, and it's it going to hit you. And it's going to blow your mind. Oh, I'm a witness today. What do you What do you and your husband do to keep it sexy in your marriage? Uh, well, first of all, my husband is the master of romance. Mm. I, I told mean, you he needed to teach a class. Tell him to stop does. playing. Stop playing, sir. He, <laughs> he is such a romantic and such a. I mean, from the time coming out, we could be at the gas station and he's coming out with roses. Mm. And he'd grab all of them out the bucket just mm. to bring them to the car. And I'm like, okay. you just melting inside. Yes. Yeah. And he got on the old Atlantic Star. All of the old jam. That's a part of the crock pot. Mm-hmm. That's a part of the crock pot. Yeah, he, he cooking the meal. He cooking, so we get hot. He cooking her he at the gas station. He preparing mm-hmm. tenderized uh-huh. things for you to put it in the you, pot. She's getting hot and ready. <laughs> and I mean, from I mean, he automatically every day opens my door. He comes around, opens my door, he got my hand, make sure I get out of the I love yeah. it when a man opens my door. Oh, he Listen. does it all the time. Puts yes. my chair on, puts my coat on, takes my coat off. Make sure I'm walking on the inside of the street. Walk on the outside. And people think sometimes that's, you know, I know how to open my own door. It's not about that. No, when a man that does that for you, it's, it, first of all, he's being a gentleman, but more so than that. He's protecting your surrounding yes. and he and he's also letting the world know this is ownership here. I got this. I'm gonna yeah. take care of my wife. Right. When I open the door, I'm protecting this. That's you right. don't have to open the door for my wife. You don't have to pull out. I got that's this. Right. That's right. I love that. That's right. And I need men to understand that that's what we want to feel. We want to feel right. protected. That's right. We want to feel kept by you. And when you open the door and pull out our chairs and not only that, let's just be honest with it. But everybody. We like how other people, when they look, look at it, <laughs> we like it. Yeah, we we gonna just admit it's it. So, I love when other people see my yes. husband handling that's me like so that. Right. Oh my yes. goodness! Because that's a lady. Yes. That, that, and they they admire it. I mean, mm-hmm. and they desire it. Yes. It's a lesson, but it's a compliment all at oh the same time. Oh my goodness! And, and I know, I know, when I was single, or whatever, and I used to see a married woman and her husband was opening the door for her, and I was like, man, how did she get him to do that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, really, all it is is ask him. Ask him. See, my husband wasn't um, used to that either, and I came into the relationship dependent. Oh, I opened my own door, blah, blah, blah. Well, that changed, and when that changed for me, I went and talked to him about it, so we adjusted. And when I tell you, I don't have to ask my husband to open the doors for me anymore. I don't have to ask him to pull out my chair. I don't have to, you know, that chivalry is not dead. I mean, he does all of that. My husband, oh, he spoils the mess out of me with it. Let me tell you, it turns it on, it turns me on. 
I I was the open. I, I could open. I had gotten to the place of opening my own door because I, I did have that. But I had gotten to the place of opening my own door and doing all of these things. Yeah. The independent woman. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my husband was the person who did open the door. Uh, when we were dating, he walked me to my door, kissed me on the cheek, and let me in the house. I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that part I had had before. I was like, Sir. When he came to get me, let, let me just show y'all. So. I knew we had to hurry up and get me in. Mm -hmm. He came to get me for. Because that's day. a turn on, ain't it? Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. This he came to get me for a day and he rang the bell and I opened the door and I walked away. So I'm talking, thinking that he's in the house. This this how ignorant. You I opened the door and walked away. Yeah. Because I'm thinking he'll just open the door and walk away. Oh, so you were expecting him to walk away. Okay. <laughs> Stop talking and I turn around and go, like, where is he? So he's still outside. I said, why didn't you come in? He said, because you didn't invite me. Said, proper I etiquette. Said, That's you proper said you didn't etiquette. Invite me in. I said, okay. So I opened the door. I said, you, can, you know, you can come in. So I closed the door and I said, just give me a minute. You know, I'm tired of my shoes. So I walk into the living room and he's still standing at the door. He said, no, come on. He said, okay. I was waiting for you to invite me to come and sit down. So I said, proper you can come in and have a seat, or whatever. So we got ready to go. Um, Oh, oh, wait for me to get my things and everything. And um, I came out. He held the door, the screen door, while I locked the door. Uh -huh. And then when I was coming down the stairs, he walked down in front of me and he held my hand down two steps. This man's been trained. Okay. I, I, I like a train. So then well, he opens train. my door, <laughs> puts me in the car, closes the door, goes around, gets in the car. We get back. And I fast forward with him. Of course, you know, if he did all that, he pulled my chair out, all the things that he did. With that gentleman. And we get back. Get to the house and um, we talk for a few minutes. And he gets out of the car with the car running. Comes around to my door, opens the door, closes it, takes me up to the door, put me in the house, kisses me on cheek, and says, "Have a good evening." Goes and gets back in his car, waits for me to close the door. Wait, and then for pulls her off. to close the door. He waited for me to close the door. And I bet you the first thing you did was got on your phone with your girlfriend and said, I was like, let that's me that's tell that's you that's what. That's 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 See, that's some people don't like the word train, oh, but I love the word train. Yes. My husband is trained. I'm trained to be, you know, I've trained myself. God, the word has trained me. Yes. Yes. The word has trained Absolutely. me how to be a wife. Mm -hmm. You know, and looking at those who um, I look up to, my my pastors, my leaders, and yes. see how they take care of their husbands yes. and how the husbands take care of their wives, we're now trained and we should know better. That's right. But oftentimes there's a lot of people who have not been trained or they're not watching for that. So they have to literally be taken in a class and actually trained. This is what you do. This is how you do it. The whole thing about um, making sure you were in the house. Or sometimes people, uh, men might not think that, oh, when I dropped her off, then I shouldn't open the door for her to get out. She should just get she out. She should just get out of the car. No, 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 no. I, no. Mean, I, mean, I, mean, I know. Uh, Listen, it was he was adding one up. Night. He was adding up the check mark. Baby. Check, check. That time it was time to get married. I was like, yep. Yep, he's I definitely the one. Yeah, yep. he's the one. We went to Dunkin' Donuts and it was, it was I had taken off my shoe mm -hmm. and um, it was raining. And um, he said, I'm going to go in and get some donuts that you want something new. He said, matter of fact, you know what you need to come in or whatever. I said, okay. So I went down there to get my shoe on. He said, well, don't worry about that. He came around to my door. He said, just slide around. He picked me up and carried me in Dunkin' Donuts. I'm done. He held me, and the whole time we were in the restaurant, I ordered my donuts. He ordered his. He did not. He told the lady to put the box While in my lap. Oh, While he was holding it. She put the box, <laughs> like, you know, your body, body cuffs. She set the box there. He pushed the door with his body, got to the car, opened the door, set me back in my seat. Honey, listen, let me tell you something. Well, he really knocked you off your feet. <laughs> right on off. Bob, knock off. <laughs> when I tell what? you, and today. And, and listen, let me tell you something. The women that were in Dunkin' Donuts oh, they were did. like, girl. They said it. They were like, that's a man. They said we it. We ain't never seen this before. I get it Don't everywhere. You that? Yes, oh, I get it goodness. everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I get that. Girl, I would have been like, I was, I would have stood up and been speechless. In the so car. first of all, you need a man that can pick you up. <laughs> be able to lift me. <laughs> I don't care if I'm two hundred pounds. 
lift me up. I need a man strong enough to lift me up and take me into Dunkin' Donuts. Come on. I'm going home and asking my husband, can he carry me? Just that I don't even want a donut, but I'm going to tell him to go carry him. Yes. You tell your husband, I'm telling your husband on this camera, you watch it, you need to hold a class and tell men about chivalry. It is not yes. dead, it's well alive, and you yes. need to teach them and write Absolutely. the book. Tell them to write the book. I'm can, you say, can you say that again? Write the book, sir. Because you're carrying your wife into Dunkin' Donuts and ordering donuts and put it on the... And carrying her back up, I'm gonna need you to write the donut book. That's what we're gonna call it, the donut. The donut. Yeah. He's gonna call it the donut. Can you, can you just, I'm just saying. That's a Dunkin' Donut book. Oh, okay. I'm telling you, yeah. but I do like little love cards. Uh, where he, it's a scratch off that I got from Lover's name to tell him what, what he can have that night. Yeah. So he scratch it off. So now she telling and him, do you it can have night. whatever you like. You do like sitting there watching TV in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell him all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got these little dice and you roll them and it tell you what you, you know, what uh -huh. you do. She got the dice, y'all, the mm -hmm. sex dice. Not y'all single people, the married people. This, no got bang, that, put a ring no on thing. No ring and no thing. No, but that's But, you know, that's just great. things like that, um, candlelight dinner. And then you show, you know how they say sexting? Yes. Now, y'all single folks shouldn't be sexting, but your married folks, I'm going to need you to get your sexting on. Mm -hmm. I mean, send a message in the middle of the day. Yes. Say, boy, I'm thinking about you. I'm going to yeah. tear you up when you, I can't uh -huh. wait till you get it. And, and, and here's what I want to, I want to, I want to pull out that I really appreciate about you. Those who've been married, this is your third marriage. I love that you didn't allow shame and condemnation to come in there because look what you would have missed out on. You wouldn't have got the Dunkin' Donuts move. <laughs> I almost missed it. You wouldn't have been carried in. You. <laughs> Shame would have caught yes. you from that. Mm -hmm. This great marriage you got, and yes. even your husband has a great, ex your children have a great example yes, to do. look at now because mm -hmm. of who your husband is. He's a man of God. Mm -hmm. He not only speaks God's God word, he lives it. Yes, and now he's an example to your children and even to you. You would have missed out on all yes. of that. Mm -hmm. So I want to say to the women out there, if you, you, you've you been from one bad relation to the next bad relationship, maybe you've been divorced four or five times, who freaking cares? Right. Repent. Turn away from your wicked ways. Ask God to heal you. And don't carry that shame, but also learn from why. Yes. you got to ask yourself why. Take some downtime. It was two yes. years. It was two years from my divorce that I even met him. Wow. It wasn't an immediate I met him and that was it. Yeah. It was two years. When I was doing the women's ministry, when Ty was coming to the women's ministry, yes. um, I got a divorce. My, my daughter died in April of 2002. November 2002, he left. Wow. I'm dealing with somebody in our church. I'm going to tell y'all. This one wasn't on me. Because I had gotten together. I, I had made my mind up. I was going to learn how to be a wife. And I had made it up. And the Lord said, we're going to be a wife here. Because this ain't what I got for. Mm. And this was right after your daughter passed. So I didn't think I was going to live. Yeah. Yeah. So wait a minute. Your daughter passed in April 2002. How old was she? Angel was two and a half. She'd been three July 1st. So she was almost three years old. Wow. And and when she passed in April, then your husband left you in, in November. Thanksgiving. He called me the other woman's name. Um, Thanksgiving Day. Low down. Dirty. You gonna call her the other? Man. And then told me he didn't say it. And see, he you can even, and see, that alone can come with shame. You can feel I'm not I worthy. Did. He wanted I somebody felt else. ugly. Yeah. I compared myself. I put myself down. I stopped going to church. Oh, I stopped going to church. Let me clear. I'm not yeah. gonna sit here and say that. Not like the church or well, he was, um, you said he was messing with somebody at our church. The church. Oh, okay, and that'll make told, you that'll I make told you my stop. pastor what's happening, and he's like, let me pray and everything. And it tore He told what? I told, I told our pastor what was happening. Uh -huh. And he asked what I did. And I said, I know. Yeah. You know what's up. You know. Okay. You know. And um, we have to show up into it. He's married to her now. Wow. Um, May God bless you right. and keep bless you and, and have mercy on you. No, no. So wow, you you really had to find it in your heart to forgive him for that. And that's a lot of you know, church hurt ain't, is real. You know, it's real. And so real. how long did it take for you to forgive him for that? To be honest with you, I was still ready to kill him five years later. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him to his face. Wow. Um to to say that 
we're Christians and forgiveness just happens, uh, we can say it. But I want you to understand that it's a process. Mm -hmm. Because while you may be able to forgive and go on, you have to, I've said it over and over again about so many situations, but until I felt it here, mm -hmm. I knew that it wasn't real. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be forgiving, but I didn't know how to get from underneath the hurt. Right, and I think that's the key. Because we can learn how to forgive instantly. Yes. But if we don't know how to get through pain before the unforgiveness happens, yes. before somebody do something to us, that's right. if we don't learn what that is, we don't learn how to forgive that, it's going to be hard for us to forgive. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you know what, Angela, we can go, you and I can go days on this conversation all day long. It, it was a ple Thank you so much. No, thank you. We, I, this we ate, we shopped out, we walked, we had a good time, we yes. played in the field with the kids, and man, yes. we've had a great time, and I can't wait. We're going to do this again. I want you to tell your husband thank you for allowing you to be here with thank me. You, boo. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Who's gonna write the book called The Donut? <laughs> Listen, y'all, I know you guys enjoy this. I want you to share it. I want you to like it. I want you to rewind it and, and, and listen to those key points again because if you're a wife and you live in this life, it's listen, and if you desire to be a wife, yes. this life as a wife is no joke. No, it's not. You know what? So you there's some there's some key elements that you have to learn now before you even get in it. And for that's the wife right. that's in it, listen, anything that you're going through, you can be delivered from, you can get healed from. And listen, all this stuff can turn around if you just take these key points that we've been sharing. And, and, and implement it. Don't just say them. Don't just listen. Do it. Because listen, you hearing it ain't doing anything. You doing it is what's going to cause transformation yes. in your marriage. So listen, I want to thank you all. I want to thank my guest, thank you, thank you, the thank First you. Lady Angela Cadwell, for being here with me. And I look forward to seeing you all again for Solution Sundays at 7. I'm Mrs. Toy Banks, the world's most satisfied wife and for Better Wife of Life, helping you balance it all. God bless. Hey everybody, I want to thank you for joining me for a special edition for Solution Sundays at 7. That's right. And I want to send a special thanks to my girl, First Lady Angela Cadwell, who brought it today. I hope that you really got some solutions out of this broadcast. We had an absolute blast. So I can't wait to for you to join me for the next edition of Solution Sundays at 7. With me, your girl, Mrs. Toy Banks, the world's most satisfied wife in For Better Wife, Better Life, helping you balance it all. Now, come on, I got to get Ice out here. She's like, listen, I'm tired of this conversation, tired of this taping. Come on, Ice, let's go.